Hello friends, this video on respiration in plants part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us look at the net result of aerobic respiration or the net yield of aerobic respiration. So what were the different steps of aerobic respiration? Glycolysis, then pyruvate oxidation followed by Krebs cycle and then electron transport chain. So now let us see how many ATP molecules were produced in each of these steps. So let us start with glycolysis. So in glycolysis, a total of two ATP were produced and two NADH were produced, right? So that was the yield of glycolysis. Pyruvate oxidation, two NADH molecules were produced. In Krebs cycle, two ATP were produced, six NADH were produced and two FADH2 were produced. So now I don't really need to tell you how they were produced. We have already discussed everything step by step, right? And what happened during the electron transport chain? But when I say net result of aerobic respiration, we want to know how many total molecules of ATP were produced as a result of aerobic respiration. So if we just count the total ATP here, we see two from glycolysis plus two from Krebs, Krebs cycle so far. Now these NADH, they all got converted into ATP during the electron transport chain. And in the electron transport chain, we saw that one NADH could produce three ATP molecules. However, the NADH which were produced during glycolysis, this NADH were produced in the cytoplasm. Right? So basically this NADH had to travel all the way from cytoplasm to the mitochondria and then take part in the electron transport chain. So it has been observed that the NADH which were produced in the cytoplasm, they could produce sometimes 2 ATP, sometimes 3 ATP. So one NADH could produce 2 to 3 ATP. So for now we will consider that in the cytoplasm whatever NADH were produced, each NADH could produce 2 ATP. So that means 2 NADH could produce 4 ATP. So 4 ATP here. If you talk about this NADH, this is in the mitochondria. So in mitochondria, 1 NADH could produce 3 ATP. So here it would be 6 ATP. If you talk about this one, this is also in mitochondria. So here also 1 NADH could produce 3 ATP. So 6 NADH would produce 18 ATPs. So the total number of ATPs that were produced from NADH were 18 plus 4 that is 22 plus 6 that is 28. So 28 ATPs from NADH. Now you are left with FADH2. Now in the electron transport chain it was seen that the electrons which were released from NADH had higher energy than the electrons which were released from FADH2. That is why it was seen that one FADH2 could produce only two ATP molecules. Because here you could see the difference, right? The FADH2 it entered through a different pathway altogether. So two was like almost near to three. So this and electrons had lesser energy when compared to these ones. So two ATP molecules. So that means two FADH2 gave rise to four ATP molecules. So four ATP from FADH2. So now if you add up all of them, you see it, the count comes out to be 36 ATP molecules. Now in some textbooks you see it is 36, in some textbooks you see it is 38. It is 38 because some of them consider that this NADH2 also gives rise to 3 ATP molecules. So in that case it will become 6 ATP, so this will also increase by 38. So sometimes so it varies from 36 to 38 ATP molecules. So this is the net yield of aerobic respiration. Now when we will talk about anaerobic respiration that is absence, in absence of oxygen we will get to know that how the yield varies. In that case you will see hardly 2 to 3 ATP molecules get produced whereas here around 36 to 38 ATP molecules are getting produced. Right? And here the last step that is the electron transport chain. Here the process of ATP synthesis is often known as oxidative phosphorylation. Why? 
because phosphorylation is taking place that is phosphorus is being added to ADP to form ATP and who is providing the energy the oxidation reduction reactions throughout the uh, electron transport chain the oxidation reduction reactions which is happening that is providing the energy that is why it is called oxidative force phosphorylation while whereas in case of photosynthesis it was called photophosphorylation because there the energy was provided by light so with this we end our discussion on aerobic respiration and i hope that you have got an idea about how the process takes place Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.